Okay, our next speaker uh, in this, uh, final speaker in this session of describing the problem is Don Hodel, who's a environmental horticulture advisor in LA County. Don. Thank you, Mary Lou. It's an honor uh, to be here. Just as a very short background, I work for the University of California in their agriculture ex uh, extension program. I work with the com commercial landscape industry in Los Angeles County. And while there, avocados are landscape trees too, not just fruit trees, uh, they, they, they do show up in the landscape. And uh, of course, there are other species now that are being attacked by this beetle and by the fungus. Uh, let's see if I can get this thing to work right. Okay. So a, a, as you've probably heard so far, that this is a symbiotic relationship between this shot hole borer and now it's not being called the tea shot hole borer anymore and the uh, this new species of fungus and, and both are probably likely new species, the, the beetle and the fungus. And the shot hole borer, borer was first detected in California in 2003. Uh, initially, the, the disease has been particularly devastating on avocado and box elder, but we found that uh, the shot hole borer attacks many other species of landscape trees, and the host list is growing as I stand here. And now I've uh, picked up from some people that it's probably over 250 species. Fortunately, not all of them uh, become infected with the fusarium, or at least uh, react to the fusarium. Some of the symptoms to look for are, di are dark, dry or water-soaked or, or oily-looking lesions, and I have pictures of these I can show you, that are around the, the beetle entry and exit holes, uh, discolored wood, and discolored or chlorotic leaves. Wilting, branch dieback, sometimes just on one part of the tree, or the entire death of a, a tree. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna focus on an incident that happened to, over two years ago, actually, in Long Beach. And because I work with uh, many cities and municipalities in Los Angeles County, uh, the, the Long Beach called me down to this neighborhood. This was in late August, or early September, almost exactly two years ago. In fact, the, the person from Long Beach who's, who called, called me down is in the audience, Eliud, and he's sitting right over there. And they showed me these uh, box elder trees that were planted as street trees. And the devastation was spectacular, to say the least. It was absolutely amazing uh, what was going on. And th these are all pictures of the bark or, or the wood of, of box elder trees. And you see the staining. Uh, let's see. And there's an entry exit hole with that whitish halo or circle around it. And scraping the wood reveals a discoloration. The scraping of the bark reveals a discoloration. Uh, again, this is all, these are all box elder. On, on severely infested trees and one where the disease has progressed, the, the, the bark doesn't even look like typical box elder bark anymore. And it, it's, it's totally discolored and stained, almost like it's been varnished or lacquered. And uh, you can also see uh, some of the discolored leaves here. If you look carefully, they're, ver they're chlorotic. All this is the staining uh, caused by the uh, disease and the beetle. So th there's one of the uh, Acer Nagundo or box elder. Uh, in this case, half the tree was dead and, and half was still alive, but the half that was alive wasn't gonna be alive for very long. And, and then you see an entire tree that, that's uh, dead now from uh, this disease. As I said, the, in this one neighborhood, the destruction and devastation was absolutely spectacular on box elder. I surveyed other trees in the neighborhood. At least a dozen other common landscape species were a attacked by the beetle. And uh, th these are some of the other species that, that had active uh, feeding or exit entry going on. Uh, all of them had that dark, water-soaked, staining 
uh, tissue surrounding the, the, the entry exit holes. And uh, some of the trees, obviously, you could see that they were fighting back. For example, Colrutaria, or the uh, golden rain tree, uh, was, was very good at exuding uh, syrupy exudate that plugged the holes. And I, I, so I, I think that uh, many of these trees are going to be able to withstand the uh, beetle. So there's an example of what some of the other trees looked like. And you, and, and you can see that there was a, extensive damage. This is Albizia julibrisson in the upper left, a Colbertaria, the, that uh, rain tree, upper right. Lower left is liquid ambar, perhaps the most common street tree. And on the far right is Platinus, oops, uh, Hispanica or Platinus acerifolia, the London plane tree. But uh, fortunately, uh, it was only the, I went back, I've been back to that neighborhood many times over the last uh, two years, and only, it's only the Acer negundo that died. These other uh, species, you can still see the exit entry wound sites, but the, the beetle activity is much reduced because you don't see a lot of, of fresh oozing, uh, water-soaked or oily lesions. So there, there is a, a, a silver lining somewhere in this gray cloud, I think. Uh, what, what we can do to manage this problem, I think the mo most important thing is to maintain trees in, in optimal growing conditions and vigor. It, it's not going to stop them from being attacked, whether the trees are are, are in a healthy and vigorous state or not, probably doesn't affect whether they're attacked or not. However, if a tree is attacked, and if it's gonna survive, it will recover more rapidly if it's in a healthy, vigorous condition to begin with. So this means uh, if we have the luxury, selecting the proper species for the proper location in the landscape, and then maintaining that species uh, appropriately. Uh, we know little about uh, the use of pesticides to control the, the beetle and or the fungus. Uh, hopefully that there'll be some research on this, perhaps some of the new family of, of systemics like imidacloprid and, and other related compounds would, would be good. I don't know, hopefully this will be uh, looked at. And then of course, uh, if you find infestations, uh, don't, move, don't move the wood. And uh, I, think, I think there'll be somebody after me who will, who will be speaking uh, today about how to handle infested wood, because by moving the infested wood, we run the risk of spreading uh, the beetle. Uh, that's all I have, so I'm, okay.